Okay, we are moving into video two of what I'm calling my broody mess. We've got these babies. They need a mama of some sort. So we're gonna try to move this mama in the daytime and see what happens. This is probably going to fail. Okay, so this is why I'm saying you have to make a quick decision on what you're gonna do. So since I had to move these eggs for their sake, and since she's probably not gonna take to my brooder, which I'm, I'm about to try, these babies may have to go into the incubator. Let's take you through the steps. Fifty-gallon tote, fresh bedding, water waiting, food in here, six eggs. We're praying, we're trying. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's like she kind of doesn't know what to do. What happened was I went up to the loft to get her. She was gone. She was down, all broody, puffed up, trying to get a little something to eat. So I grabbed her, I covered her with the towel just to make it over here. Ideally, you want to move your broody hens and babies and whatnot at night, okay? However, that doesn't always work out that way. I don't want these funky eggs up there and I'm not gonna fall out of the loft at 10.30 at night. So I made a decision today to go ahead and see what was going on. I really didn't expect any of these to be viable, is what, to be honest with you. So we've got her over here. I'm gonna see if she sits. If she rejects this whole idea, I'm taking these babies and I'm putting them straight into the incubator and we'll see what happens. From that point, obviously we're gonna to have to continue to pull the eggs from the loft because you know nobody's been up there for months and it needs a big cleaning and there's nothing up there except some hay and some debris and things like that. So anyway, and the other day I thought, we've got so many broody hens around here, we better check the loft and lo and behold, look what we found. So let's give it a little bit and um, see what she does. Okay, so here we are. Not long after, come in, done some chores, showered. We have a big egg cell today, washing eggs. It's time to make a decision, and folks, the girl just ain't having it. So it's time to go to plan C. No good. Hi, Dean. All right, so folks, what we're gonna do is we are gonna take her and put her right back. I'm gonna take these eggs and uh, I'm gonna put them in the house. I'm gonna put them in my incubator and uh, we're just gonna see what we can do with them. If we get one hatch come out, you know, one little hatchling, it, it is, it's what's meant to happen. But we could not leave her in the loft. It's too hot, um, there's too much going on. I don't wanna manage going up and down the loft to manage her, so I pulled her. And, you know, I didn't have any expectations of these eggs to begin with. So this is kind of like, oh my goodness. So it is better to move your hens at night. We started taking action because we had a, really no expectation. Elsa, however, behind me, who we're on close watch of, you've seen her on a previous video. I'll put that up at the top. Just a few days, you know, last week, she's on eggs and I moved her in the middle of the day. So broodiness may have something to do with it as well. This just may not be her jam up here. So we're gonna put her back, let her put her up, get her some uh, fresh uh, goods and uh, let her make a decision. And we're gonna be pulling the eggs, okay? We're gonna be pulling the eggs. Not this time, girl, not this time.
Alrighty, we are almost there and we are pinched on time. So I went ahead and put my babies in here. Who knows what's going to happen? You know what I'm saying? You can't predict this. This was something that we just didn't expect. And there they are. Maybe we'll get a baby or two. Maybe we'll get all six. The good thing is, is we have Miss Elsa right now, who is very, very broody on 13 eggs. In fact, I'm debating on whether I should candle them because, frankly, I think we're really, we may be past lockdown. So maybe she can raise these babies at some point. Or, you know what, guess what? I've got another hatchling, a whole batch <laughs> of hatchlings on the way that were offered to us months ago from McMurray Hatchery. And we specifically had them uh, shipped this week because we, two weeks from today is the Great Appalachian Homesteading Conference. I know you're coming because all veterans and military are free and we have 21 classes and endless demos and information booths and 18th century camp. It's going to be awesome. Tennessee Tech University. Check out the information. But McMurray is our sponsor. One of our sponsors, and they are sending babies for the conference. So we scheduled them to come this week. So be looking for that video. Looking forward to it. And by the way, let me show you something awesome. You want to see something awesome? Let me show you something awesome. What is this? Look at this. Have you seen this over on Daisy King Farm? Miss Angela is genius. The best soap maker on the planet period. And now she has these awesome like soap savers and they drain. And you know, I was like, oh, those are cute. And then I just told her the other day, I said, this is the most amazing thing to have you know, by your bathroom sink, your kitchen sink, or in your shower. Because if you use these really nice handmade soaps, you want them to last as long as possible. And the best way to do that is so that you can set the soap and then it drains. Look at that. Let me show you this magic. And you need to visit Daisy King Farm here on YouTube. Okay, so I'm literally doing this one-handed. And I was just telling Angela the other day that I may be a weirdo, but I love coming in here and grabbing her soap. And I'm not a lefty. And I'll wash my hands. And this is the orange, is this the, oh, is this orange patchouli? And it's one of my favorites. She's got... She has endless, endless, endless uh, beautiful soaps. And get it all wet. Look, get it all wet. Get it all wet. Woo, get it all wet. And then you come over when you're done and you set it. Ah! <laughs> that is like crazy satisfaction. Isn't that cute? Look at this. Check out her channel. She has these on her Etsy. Folks, I'm telling you, it, it, whether you buy her soaps, which you should because they're amazing, uh, or not, but to have these and you place your soap and then they drain, that is how you're going to get the most value out of your beautiful soaps. I had to show this because I'm telling, let's do it again. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it, I'm doing it again. Doing it, get it, get it wet. Get it. Watch. <laughs> Angela, they are totally cool. All right, guys. So this is the conclusion of the video. No two broodies are the same. No situation, uh, any two situations are ever going to be the same. You have to be willing to work with what you've got. You've got to think ahead and have multiple plans because you never know what's going to happen. Check out those soap savers on Angela's YouTube channel and check, subscribe to her, guys. It's such a wonderful family. You, I'm serious. You know, I, you need to go there. And we'll keep you posted on all the wonderful things that are happening here. Be sure to check out information about the Great Appalachian Homesteading Conference. Busy, busy. I've got to get in there and wash those eggs, people. 30 dozen sold. We'll see you on the next video.